Section six of the Citizens Almanac. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section six Presidential Statements on Citizenship and Immigration. The United States has a long cherished history as a welcoming country, and the contributions of immigrants continue to enrich the nation. While our citizens come from different backgrounds and cultures, Americans are bound together by shared ideals based on individual freedom and the rule of law. American presidents, beginning with George Washington, have acknowledged the contributions of immigrants and regularly spoken about the importance of responsible citizenship. Speaking on behalf of the United States and its citizens, presidential speeches are often eloquent and endearing, conveying the feelings of the nation. The following section includes a collection of presidential quotes on citizenship and the important contributions of immigrants. As you read, note that throughout history, U.S. presidents have expressed a consistent message on these two themes. George Washington The bosom of America is open to receive not only the opulent and respectable stranger, but the oppressed and persecuted of all nations and religions, whom we shall welcome to a participation of all our rights and privileges, if by decency and propriety of conduct they appear to merit the enjoyment. 1783 Thomas Jefferson Born in other countries, yet believing you could be happy in this, our laws acknowledge, as they should, your right to join us in society, conforming, as I doubt not you will do, to our established rules. That these rules shall be as equal as prudential considerations will admit will certainly be the aim of our legislatures, general and particular. 1801 Abraham Lincoln Let us at all times remember that all American citizens are brothers of a common country, and should dwell together in the bonds of fraternal feeling. 1860 Ulysses S. Grant The immigrant is not a citizen of any state or territory upon his arrival, but comes here to become a citizen of a great republic, free to change his residence at will, to enjoy the blessings of a protecting government, where all are equal before the law, and to add to the national wealth by his industry. On his arrival, he does not know states or corporations, but confides implicitly in the protecting arm of the great free country of which he has heard so much before leaving his native land. 1872 The United States wisely, freely, and liberally offers its citizenship to all who may come in good faith to reside within its limits on their complying with certain prescribed reasonable and simple formalities and conditions. Among the highest duties of the government is that to afford firm, sufficient, and equal protection to all its citizens, whether native-born or naturalized. 1874 Grover Cleveland Heretofore, we have welcomed all who came to us from other lands, except those whose moral or physical condition or history threaten danger to our national welfare and safety. Relying upon the zealous watchfulness of our people to prevent injury to our political and social fabric, we have encouraged those coming from foreign countries to cast their lot with us and join in the development of our vast domain securing in return a share in the blessings of american citizenship 1897 theodore roosevelt the good citizen is the man who whatever his wealth or his poverty strives manfully to do his duty to himself to his family to his neighbor to the state who is incapable of the baseness which manifests itself either in arrogance or in envy but who, while demanding justice for himself, is no less scrupulous to do justice to others. It is because the average citizen, rich or poor, is of just this type that we have cause for our profound faith in the future of the Republic. 1903 We are all of us Americans, 
and nothing else we all have equal rights and equal obligations we form part of one people in the face of all other nations paying allegiance only to one flag and a wrong to any one of us is a wrong to all the rest of us 1917 woodrow wilson this is the only country in the world which experiences this constant and repeated rebirth other countries depend upon the multiplication of their own native people this country is constantly drinking strength out of new sources by the voluntary association with it of great bodies of strong men and forward-looking women out of other lands and so by the gift of the free will of independent people it is being constantly renewed from generation to generation by the same process by which it was originally created you have just taken an oath of allegiance to the united states of allegiance to whom of allegiance to no one unless it is god certainly not of allegiance to those who temporarily represent this great government you have taken an oath of allegiance to a great ideal to a great body of principles to a great hope of the human race 1915 we came to america either ourselves or in the persons of our ancestors to better the ideals of men to make them see finer things than they had seen before to get rid of the things that divide and to make sure of the things that unite 1915 warren g harding nothing is more important to america than citizenship there is more assurance of our future in the individual character of our citizens than in any proposal i or all the wise advisers i can gather can ever put into effect in washington 1920 calvin coolidge american citizenship is a high estate he who holds it is the peer of kings it has been secured only by untold toil and effort it will be maintained by no other method it demands the best that men and women have to give but it likewise awards its partakers the best that there is on earth 1924 whether one traces his americanism back three centuries to the mayflower or three years to the steerage is not half so important as whether his americanism of today is real and genuine no matter by what various crafts we came here we are all now in the same boat 1925 franklin d roosevelt the principle on which this country was founded and by which it has always been governed is that americanism is a matter of the mind and heart americanism is not and never was a matter of race and ancestry a good american is one who is loyal to this country and to our creed of liberty and democracy 1943 harry s truman there is no more precious possession today than united states citizenship a nation is no stronger than its citizenry with many problems facing us daily in this perplexing and trying era it is vital that we have a unity of purpose to the end that freedom justice and opportunity goodwill and happiness may be assured ourselves and peoples everywhere 1948 john f kennedy everywhere emigrants have enriched and strengthened the fabric of american life 1959 lyndon b johnson our citizens naturalized or native born must also seek to refresh and improve their knowledge of how our government operates under the constitution and how they can participate in it only in this way can they assume the full responsibilities of citizenship and make our government more truly of by and for the people 1967 ronald reagan it's long been my belief that america is a chosen place a rich and fertile continent placed by some divine providence here between the two great oceans 
and only those who really wanted to get here would get here. Only those who most yearned for freedom would make the terrible trek that it took to get here. America has drawn the stoutest hearts from every corner of the world, from every nation of the world. And that was lucky for America, because if it were going to endure and grow and protect its freedom for two hundred years, it was going to need stout hearts. 1984 I received a letter just before I left office from a man. I don't know why he chose to write it, but I'm glad he did. He wrote that you can go to live in France, but you can't become a Frenchman. You can go to live in Germany or Italy, but you can't become a German and Italian. He went through Turkey, Greece, Japan, and other countries. But he said anyone from any corner of the world can come to live in the United States and become an American. 1990 George H. W. Bush Nearly all Americans have ancestors who braved the oceans, liberty-loving risk-takers in search of an ideal, the largest voluntary migrations in recorded history. Across the Pacific, across the Atlantic, they came from every point on the compass, many passing beneath the Statue of Liberty, with fear and vision, with sorrow and adventure, fleeing tyranny or terror, seeking haven and all seeking hope. Immigration is not just a link to America's past. It's also a bridge to America's future. 1990 William J. Clinton More than any other nation on earth, America has constantly drawn strength and spirit from wave after wave of immigrants. In each generation, they have proved to be the most restless, the most adventurous, the most innovative, the most industrious of people. Bearing different memories, honoring different heritages, they have strengthened our economy, enriched our culture, renewed our promise of freedom and opportunity for all, and together, immigrants and citizens alike, let me say we must recommit ourselves to the general duties of citizenship. Not just immigrants, but every American should know what's in our Constitution and understand our shared history. Not just immigrants, but every American should participate in our democracy by voting, by volunteering, and by running for office. Not just immigrants, but every American on our campuses and in our communities should serve. Community service breeds good citizenship. And not just immigrants, but every American should reject identity politics that seeks to separate us, not bring us together. 1998 George W. Bush America has never been united by blood or birth or soil. We are bound by ideals that move us beyond our backgrounds, lift us above our interests, and teach us what it means to be citizens. Every child must be taught these principles, every citizen must uphold them, and every immigrant, by embracing these ideals, makes our country more, not less, American. 2001 America's welcoming society is more than a cultural tradition. It is a fundamental promise of our democracy. Our Constitution does not limit citizenship by background or birth. Instead, our nation is bound together by a shared love of liberty and a conviction that all people are created with dignity and value. Through the generations, Americans have upheld that vision by welcoming new citizens from across the globe, and that has made us stand apart. 2006 Barack H. Obama For more than two centuries, this nation has been a beacon of hope and opportunity a place that has drawn enterprising men and women from around the world who have sought to build a life as good as their talents and their hard work would allow. And generation after generation of immigrants have come to these shores because they believe that in America all things are possible. 2009 End of Section 6《セクション7》of the Citizens Almanac。This LibriVox recording is in the public domain。《セクション7》。
prominent foreign-born Americans. Throughout our nation's history, foreign-born men and women have come to the United States, taken the oath of allegiance, and contributed greatly to their new communities and country. The United States welcomes individuals from nations near and far, and immigrants have played an important role in establishing this country as the land of opportunity. America takes great pride in being known as a nation of immigrants. The following section provides examples of individuals who have come to the United States, become citizens by choice, and left a lasting impression on our society. This list is by no means all-encompassing, as a comprehensive record would be nearly impossible. Instead, it serves the purpose of highlighting a selection of foreign-born Americans coming from a wide range of countries who have had a significant impact on the United States as we know it today. John Paul Jones, 1747-1792 American Naval Officer John Paul was born July 6, 1747, in Kirkbean, Kirkcudbrightshire, Scotland, now Dumfries and Galloway, Scotland. At age 21, he commanded his first ship and quickly became a very successful merchant skipper in the West Indies. In the mid-1770s, he moved to the British colonies in North America, adopting the last name Jones. At the beginning of the American Revolution, he joined the Continental Navy and was commissioned first lieutenant. During the war, Jones commanded several vessels, including the Duc de Duras, which he renamed Bonhomme Richard, in honor of Benjamin Franklin's Poor Richard's Almanac. Aboard this ship on September 23, 1779, Jones engaged the British vessel HMS Serapis off the coast of England. Jones defeated the HMS Serapis in one of the most storied battles in United States naval history. He is now entombed beneath the chapel of the U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland. Alexander Hamilton, 1757 to 1804. First Secretary of the Treasury, serving under President George Washington. Hamilton was born January 11, 1757, on the island of Nevis, British West Indies, now part of the independent country of St. Kitts and Nevis. Hamilton moved to America in 1772, where he attended preparatory school in Elizabethtown, New Jersey. At the outbreak of the American Revolution in 1776, Hamilton entered the Continental Army in New York as Captain of Artillery. In 1777, he was appointed aide-de-camp to General George Washington. Hamilton was one of the three men responsible for the Federalist Papers and was a guiding spirit behind the adoption of the U.S. Constitution. With the adoption of the Constitution in 1787, Hamilton, like all other residents of the new nation, became an original founding citizen of the United States. He was also a founder and leader of the first political party in the United States, the Federalists. William Lysendorf, 1810-1848 American businessman and first African-American diplomat. Lysendorf was born in the Danish West Indies, now the U.S. Virgin Islands, to a Danish man and an African woman in 1810. He was raised by a wealthy English plantation owner and obtained a formal education while in Danish West Indies. Upon his caretaker's untimely death, he moved to the United States, settling in New Orleans, Louisiana. He became a naturalized U.S. citizen in 1834. Lysendorf became active in the mercantile industry and soon developed a trade route between Yerba Buena, now San Francisco, California, and Honolulu, Hawaii. In 1844, while living in California, then part of Mexico, he became a Mexican citizen in order to increase his land holdings. On October 29, 1845, Thomas O. Larkin, U.S. Consul in Monterey, California, appointed Lysendorf a vice-counsel at Yerba Buena, 
Leisendorf secretly helped the United States annex the region of California. His service as vice consul lasted until the U.S. occupation of Northern California in July 1846. Alexander Graham Bell, 1847 to 1922. American inventor introduced the telephone in 1876. Bell was born March 3, 1847, in Edinburgh, Scotland. In 1872, he moved to the United States, where he taught at Boston University. Bell became a naturalized U.S. citizen in 1882. At an early age, he was fascinated with the idea of transmitting speech. While working with his assistant, Thomas Watson, in Boston, Bell shared his idea of what would become the telephone. In 1876, Bell introduced the telephone to the world at the Centennial Exposition in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The invention of the telephone led to the organization of the Bell Telephone Company. Bell was also responsible for inventing the photophone in 1880, an instrument that transmitted speech by light rays. In addition, he was a co-founder of the National Geographic Society and served as its president from 1898 to 1904. Joseph Pulitzer, 1847 to 1911. American newspaper publisher. Pulitzer was born April 10, 1847, in Mako, Hungary. He emigrated to the United States in 1864 to serve in the American Civil War, joining the 1st New York Cavalry. Pulitzer began his newspaper career as an employee of a German-language daily in St. Louis, Missouri. He became a naturalized U.S. citizen in 1867. After buying two St. Louis newspapers and merging them into the successful St. Louis Post-Dispatch in 1878, Pulitzer purchased the New York World in 1883. He shifted the newspaper's focus toward human interest stories, scandals, and fighting corruption as the world's circulation grew from 15,000 to 600,000, the largest in the United States. Before his death in 1911, Pulitzer pledged money to set up a school of journalism at Columbia University in New York, as well as the Pulitzer Prizes for journalists. The Pulitzer Prizes are now considered the most prestigious awards in print journalism. Francis X. Cabrini, 1850 to 1917. American humanitarian and social worker first U.S. citizen to be canonized by the Catholic Church. Gabrini was born July 15, 1850, in Sant'Angelo Lodigiano, Italy. After taking vows to become a nun in 1877, she began teaching at an orphanage in Codogno, Italy. In 1889, Pope Leo XIII sent her to New York to begin ministering to the growing number of new immigrants in the United States. She became a naturalized U.S. citizen in 1909. Throughout her life, Cabrini worked with all those in need, including the poor, the uneducated, and the sick. She helped organize schools, orphanages, and adult education classes for immigrants in her nearly 40 years of ministry. In 1946, Pope Pius XII canonized her, making her the first U.S. citizen to be canonized. Cabrini is now the Catholic Church patron saint of immigrants. Michael Pupin, 1858-1935 American physicist and inventor. Pupin was born October 4, 1858, in Idvor, Austria-Hungary, now Serbia. In 1874, he moved to the United States, settling in New York. Pupin graduated from Columbia University with a degree in physics in 1883. He became a naturalized U.S. citizen that same year. In 1888, Pupin obtained his doctorate from the University of Berlin. Upon graduation, he returned to Columbia University, where he taught for more than 40 years. Pupin was well known for his improvement of long-distance telephone and telegraph communication. Throughout his career, he received 34 patents for his inventions. In 1924, 
he won the pulitzer prize for his autobiography from immigrant to inventor solomon carter fuller 1872 to 1953 american psychiatrist first known african-american psychiatrist in the united states fuller was born in monrovia liberia in 1872 in 1889 he moved to the united states to attend livingston college in salisbury north carolina he received his m d from boston university school of medicine in 1894 and began teaching there in 1899 fuller spent a year in munich germany studying psychiatry much of his research centered on degenerative brain diseases including alzheimer's disease which he attributed to causes other than arteriosclerosis a theory that was fully supported by medical researches in 1953 fuller became a naturalized u.s citizen in 1920 albert einstein 1879 to 1955 american scientist and nobel laureate in physics widely considered to be the greatest scientist of the twentieth century einstein was born march fourteen eighteen seventy nine at ohm in wurttemberg germany in nineteen twenty one he received the nobel prize in physics for his discovery of the law of the photoelectric effect einstein's special theory of relativity containing the famous equation e equals m c squared also won him international praise when the nazis came to power in germany in 1933 he emigrated to the united states and joined the newly formed institute for advanced studies at princeton university einstein became a naturalized u.s citizen in 1940 igor stravinsky 1882 to 1971 american composer Stravinsky was born June 17, 1882, in Oranienbaum, Russia, now Lomonosov, Russia. His early career was spent composing in Switzerland and Paris, France. Stravinsky's works include The Rite of Spring, 1913, The Soldier's Tale, 1918, Oedipus Rex, 1927, and Persephone, 1934. In 1939, he left Europe and settled in the United States. Stravinsky became a naturalized U.S. citizen in 1945. The various styles of music he experimented with made Stravinsky one of the most influential composers of his time. He is now widely regarded as one of the greatest composers of the 20th century. Felix Frankfurter, 1882-1965 american legal scholar and u s supreme court justice frankfurter was born november fifteen eighteen eighty two in vienna austria hungary now austria in eighteen ninety four he emigrated to the united states and attended both city college of new york and harvard law school by virtue of his father's naturalization frankfurter became a naturalized u s citizen he went on to serve as an assistant U.S. attorney in New York State, 1906 to 1910, and a legal officer in the Bureau of Insular Affairs, 1911 to 1914. From 1914 to 1939, Frankfurter was a professor at Harvard Law School. In 1939, President Franklin D. Roosevelt appointed him an associate justice to the U.S. Supreme Court. Newt Rockney. 1888 to 1931 american football player and coach rockney was born march 4 1888 in voss norway his father brought the family to the united states in 1893 by virtue of his father's naturalization rockney became a naturalized u.s citizen in 1896 as the head football coach of the university of notre dame from nineteen eighteen to nineteen thirty he achieved the greatest winning percentage of all time at point eight eight one per cent during his years as head coach rockney collected one hundred and five victories twelve losses five ties and six national championships he also coached notre dame to five undefeated seasons 
both as a player and a coach rockney popularized the use of the forward pass which significantly changed how the game was played irving berlin 1888 to 1989 american composer and songwriter berlin was born may 11 1888 in mogliov russia now belarus in 1893 his family immigrated to the united states he became a naturalized u.s citizen in 1918 berlin wrote music and lyrics for broadway shows such as annie get your gun 1946 and miss liberty 1949 as well as for films such as holiday inn 1942 blue skies 1946 and easter parade 1948 he also wrote popular songs such as there's no business like show business god bless america and the holiday classic white christmas in 1955 president dwight d eisenhower recognized berlin's patriotic songs by presenting him with a special medal authorized by the u s congress in nineteen eighty six berlin was one of the twelve naturalized u s citizens to receive the medal of liberty from president ronald reagan frank capra eighteen ninety seven to nineteen ninety one american film director and producer Capra was born May 18, 1897, in Palermo, Italy. In 1903, his family emigrated to the United States, settling in Los Angeles. He became a naturalized U.S. citizen in 1920. Capra is known for directing such films as Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, 1939, It's a Wonderful Life, 1946, and Mr. Deeds Goes to Town, 1936, for which he won the Academy Award for Best Director. Although it was considered a box office failure upon its release, his 1946 film, It's a Wonderful Life, has become one of the most beloved holiday films of all time. Dilip Singh Sond, 1899 to 1973 american congressman and first asian american to serve in the u s congress sond was born september twenty eighteen ninety nine in chajulwadi punjab india he graduated from the university of punjab in nineteen nineteen and moved to the united states the following year to attend the university of california saud earned both a master's degree and a doctorate from the university of california he then became a successful lettuce farmer in the Imperial Valley of California. He became a naturalized U.S. citizen in 1949. In 1952, Sound was elected Judge of Justice Court for the Westmoreland Judicial District in California's Imperial County, a position he was denied two years earlier because he had not been a U.S. citizen for more than a year. In 1956, he was elected to represent the 29th Congressional District of California in the U.S. House of Representatives, becoming the first Asian American to serve in the U.S. Congress. Marlene Dietrichs, 1901 to 1992, American actress and singer. Dietrich was born December 27, 1901, in Berlin, Germany. She began her acting career in Berlin, where she quickly became popular in the theater and in silent films. In 1929, she was cast in the film The Blue Angel, 1930, by American director Josef von Sternberg. Her performance was widely acclaimed, and Dietrich promptly moved to the United States. She starred in a variety of films during her career, including Morocco, 1930, the Devil is a Woman, 1935, Desire, 1936, and Judgment at Nuremberg, 1961. She became a naturalized U.S. citizen in 1939. During World War II, Dietrich made over 500 appearances before American troops overseas. Bob Hope, 1903-2003 American Entertainer Hope was born May 29, 1903, in Eltham, Great Britain. In 1907, his father moved the family to Cleveland, Ohio. 
In 1920, by virtue of his father's naturalization, Bob, the name he took for the rest of his life, became a U.S. citizen. Throughout his career, he appeared in a variety of films and television specials and performed many shows for American troops overseas, including World War II, 1939-1945, the Korean War, 1950-1953, the Vietnam War, 1959-1975, and the Persian Gulf War, 1991. In 1997, President William Clinton named him an honorary military veteran. Subramanian Chandra Jekor, 1910-1995 American scientist and Nobel laureate. Chandra Jekor was born October 19, 1910 in Lahore, India, now Pakistan. He earned a bachelor's degree in physics at Presidency College in Madras, India, and a doctorate from Trinity College in England. Chandra Drekor immigrated to the United States in 1937, where he joined the faculty of the University of Chicago. He became a naturalized U.S. citizen in 1953. Chandra Drekor was the first to theorize that not all stars end up as white dwarf stars, but those retaining mass above a certain limit, known today as Chandra Drekor's limit, undergo further collapse. In 1983, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics for his theoretical studies of the physical processes important to the structure and evolution of stars. In 1999, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, named one of its four great observatories orbiting the Earth in space for Chandra Drekar. Kenneth B. Clark, 1914-2005 American Psychologist Clark was born July 14, 1914, in the Panama Canal Zone. In 1919, he moved to the United States, settling in New York with his mother and sister. He became a naturalized U.S. citizen in 1931. Clark obtained a bachelor's degree from Howard University in 1935 and a master's degree in 1936. He went on to earn a doctorate in experimental psychology from Columbia University in 1940, becoming the first African American to earn a doctorate in psychology at the school. In 1946, he and his wife Mamie founded the Northside Center for Child Development in Harlem, New York, where they began conducting research on racial bias in education. A 1950 report from Clark on racial discrimination was cited in the landmark Brown v. Board of Education Supreme Court decision, which ruled public school segregation unconstitutional. Clark was also the first African American to serve as president of the American Psychological Association. In 1986, he was one of 12 naturalized U.S. citizens to receive the Medal of Liberty from President Ronald Reagan. Celia Cruz, 1925 to 2003, American singer, known as the Queen of Salsa. Cruz was born October 21, 1925, in Havana, Cuba. She became famous in Cuba in the 1950s, singing with the band La Sonora Matancera. Cruz left Cuba for the United States in 1960 after Fidel Castro came to power. She was soon headlining in the Hollywood Palladium in California and Carnegie Hall in New York. Cruz became a naturalized U.S. citizen in 1961. She appeared in several films, including The Mambo Kings, 1992, and The Perez Family, 1995, and sang a duet with David Byrne for the 1986 film Something Wild. During her long career, Cruz received a Smithsonian Lifetime Achievement Award, a National Medal of the Arts, and honorary doctorate from Yale University and the University of Miami. End of Section 7 End of The Citizen's Almanac